Welcome to the channel. No, we're not quite at the point where Skynet is going to take over your 3D printers and start amassing its own army. But what if I told you this 3D print came from this image? No sculpting, no CAD, just straight AI. If you ever wanted to take a picture of something and turn it into a mesh that you could hold in your hand, this is the video for you. I wanted to see how far uh, AI mesh generation has come and uh, it turns out Yes, you can create meshes, but there are some surprises along the way. AI has already made some big waves in 2D uh, image generation, but what about 3D? That's a whole different challenge, and that's what I set out to test in this video. So AI can generate uh, some pretty decent meshes out of thin air just from an image but uh, the quality kind of varies depending on what you're trying to do. To test the tech, I ran a variety of images through three different AI models. The images ranged from stylized characters to more complex objects. The idea was to see how the AI would handle different shapes, styles, and levels of detail. I printed over 20 different uh, AI generated models and the results were interesting. I'm gonna go over the process I used and how I fixed some of the uh, issues I ran into along the way. And if you stick around to the end, I'll share my thoughts on where I think this is all headed and why I think this is accelerating faster than most people expect. So if this is something you're already thinking that you'd like to try, do me a favor and hit that like button. Uh, it really helps the video get shown to more people. But before we dive in, I'd like to thank Sun Lu for supplying all of the filament and resin that I used in this video. Also, Sun Lu now offers refillable spools so if you're tired of tossing out empties or wrestling with cardboard, this might be a better way to go. Now let's get to it. The first model I'm using in this test is Trellis, which is backed by Microsoft. Trellis uses a machine learning model trade on lots of image 3D pairs to guess what a 3D shape might look like based off the single image. The second model is Hoonwan 3D, which is backed by Tencent. This model looks at one image and builds a 3D mesh by learning patterns of how objects usually look in 3D, like how a face curves or how a dog's body is shaped. And the third model is Rodin from Hyper 3D. This is the only paid model, and at the time of uh, when I was recording this, the only one that uh, accepted multiple images. It takes those multiple images from different angles and triangulates them to reconstruct a mesh. You have two input options for these tools. You can either write a text prompt or you can upload an image. Uh, I recommend using images as it's much easier to iterate to get something you want, especially when using tools like Midjourney or ChatGPT's new image generation. I generated a wide variety of 2D concepts, some from Midjourney, some from screenshots, and two Trellis test images. I also have images for multiple perspectives of some of the objects to test out uh, Ronin's capabilities to, to see how big of a difference that makes. All three models have the ability to remove the background when you upload the picture to them, but I find it's better to do it in Photoshop yourself instead of relying on the tool because it doesn't always get it right. Uh, especially in Photoshop, it has the auto uh, background removal tool, which does the most of it. And then you can go in and fix any errors that may have happened. It's better to have a clean cutout of your object. There's less of a chance that it'll confuse the AI while it's generating the mesh. Once you have the backgrounds removed from your images, the process is pretty simple. All three models can be run online, so it's just a matter of uploading your image and selecting generate. It usually takes 30 seconds or so to get a preview of your mesh. Then you can choose if you want the geometry to be simplified before downloading or just leave it as it is. Rodin has a few more options when generating your mesh as it seems to be geared more to generating models for 3D applications such as games. Each AI handled things a little differently. Trellis returned softer meshes and lost more detail compared to the others. It also had the most errors out of the group. Huyuan 3D actually had the best results overall. It produced more detailed meshes and while still having some errors they were relatively minor. Rodin stood out for its clean geometry and the ability to use multiple images. This gave it an edge for accuracy. Being able to upload a front, side, and back image reduced the guesswork for the AI so it could more accurately represent the mesh and didn't have to guess at uh, parts that it couldn't see. 
One issue Ronan had was that sometimes the meshes were too overly optimized and too polygonal, and that ended up showing up in the prints. Let me know in the comments which AI model you think is doing better so far. Surprisingly, most of the meshes needed uh, little to no cleanup at all. The few that did have some issues were usually fixed by going back and tweaking the input image. For example, the AI kept trying to make the watchtowers hollow, so going back and painting a simple base around the image caused it to create a flat bottom on the mesh, although Trellis still had an issue with this. For this stair terrain piece, originally the image had an opening in the back that I wanted to close up, so just by cloning the rock across the opening, uh, the AI would fill it in to make it a solid piece. I also went in and deleted some parts of the image that I just didn't want it to generate. It's often easier to go in and edit the image uh, after the fact like this instead of constantly regenerating it, trying to get uh, exactly what you're looking for. I printed it on multiple machines, but I tried to print the same models on the same machine with the same filament. Like I said earlier, I printed over 20 different meshes across three different AI, so I won't go through every single one, but let's take a look at some of the highlights. I also printed a few of the meshes in resin to really push the detail, but first we need to get rid of those supports. Something that I found interesting is that usually each mesh was a little different from each AI, even though they were all generated from the same image. I mentioned earlier that some of the fine detail gets lost, even though Trellis seems to be a bit worse. I think this is due to the resolution of the images and the mesh being used in order to generate the mesh quickly um, and the amount of compute power it's taking. I'm pretty sure this is going to get better over time. Here's a quick side-by-side -side recap of how these tools stack up, at least in my experience. Trellis, while capable at times, showed the weakest performance overall. When it worked, the results were decent, but it failed more often than the rest of the models. Hunyan 3D was my favorite for the detailed meshes it generated. The big limitation is that it only takes a single image, so the AI has to guess a lot at what it can't see. Also, if you wanted to run this locally on your home computer, the setup is pretty straightforward and it has a direct plug-in for Blender. Rodin had the best interface and consistently gave the cleanest geometry. The downside is that sometimes it over-optimized the mesh, which made the polygon show up in the print. But being able to upload multiple images gave you a much more accurate result. There was no guessing required by the AI. Also, if you're into this kind of experimental design work, or you just want to keep up with AI tools for makers, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll probably be doing more of this stuff. As I wrapped up testing, one question became clear. Where is all this headed? These AI tools are improving fast and not like next year fast, more like next week fast. And it's not just the quality, it's also the accessibility. Now anybody with a picture and a web browser can start prototyping their own meshes. So one of the questions is, how does this actually really work? These examples I'm going to use are related to AI generating images, but that's just one piece of what they can do. Image generation tends to get a lot of attention, but the same core concepts are being applied to writing code, crafting stories, analyzing massive data sets, composing music, or even simulating physical environments, all with increasing accuracy and speed. Imagine you gave a sculptor a photo of an object and asked them to make a full 3D sculpture. They'd study the image, use their knowledge of shape, texture, material, and then guess at what the back and sides might look like. That's what the AI is doing, based on what it's learned from millions of examples. Models like Trellis and Huduan 3D have been trained by looking at millions of objects from all kinds of angles. So they've learned to predict what the full 3D shape would look like, even if they've only seen one view. Rodin uses a process similar to photogrammetry. It compares multiple views to figure out where the surface, edges, and features of the object should line up in 3D space. 
all models start with a rough shape, kind of like digital clay. Once that rough shape is built, it refines it by adding detail and smoothing things out. Trellis does the least of this post-processing, which may be why it's the weakest of the three. So the process is similar to how a human sculptor would work. Start with a reference image of what you're trying to make. Imagine what it would look like from all angles, rough out a basic shape, and then refine it until you get to the final object. But here's the debate. Is this really ethical? Is AI really copying? Some argue that AI is stealing from artists when it trains on their work. And I get it, it's a real concern. But let's not forget, humans also learn by observing art. The AI isn't copying pixel for pixel. It's getting inspired by the patterns and shapes it sees, just like we do. So what is an AI model actually doing when it's training on images? It's not memorizing pictures like a photocopier. Instead, it's looking at millions of examples and learning patterns, kind of like we do when we learn to draw. You might look at thousands of pictures of dogs and over time you start to understand that dogs usually have two eyes, floppy ears, a snout, and a tail. You're not copying any one photo, you're just learning the idea of a dog. That's basically what the AI is doing. It's breaking down all those images into numbers and patterns, like edges, shapes, textures, proportions, and uses that information to generate something new based on the prompt you give it. But when an AI mimics a style, especially of a living artist, the ethical lines gets blurry. It's a bit like how musicians learn from songs they love. You might hear a bit of the influence in their songs, but it's not being plagiarized. AI can be trained to learn certain styles, like watercolor, pixel art, or even the style of a very specific artist. And that raises a fair question. If the AI is learning from a specific artist, isn't that copying? And here's the key point. Styles themselves are usually not uh, protected under copyright. You can be inspired by someone's technique, use similar brush strokes, adopt a visual style, and that's generally all okay. Artists always learn by studying others' work. Generally, they start mimicking uh, a style that they like until they can develop their own. So is it ethical for AI to mimic a living artist's work without their permission? It's a legitimate question. Just like a human artist can draw inspiration, so can AI. The real issue is AI can do it at such a scale and speed it really makes the topic more sensitive. You can't copyright a style, but you can spend years perfecting one. And that speed difference, years of human effort versus hours of machine training, is where a lot of the ethical discomfort comes from. It feels unfair, especially when the AI can produce lookalike artwork without the original artist's permission or involvement. I don't think AI is going to end human creativity, but it is going to change the game, especially for artists and creators. AI is a tool just like we moved from hand tools to power tools, or ink and paint to Photoshop, this is the next step in art. If you can learn how to use these tools to your advantage, you're gonna be ahead of the curve. If you ignore them, you run the risk of getting left behind. But like any tool, AI can be used in good and bad ways. Just as an artist can choose to copy copyrighted material, so can AI, if that's what you ask it to do. Some platforms try to prevent this, but people still find a ways around the safeguards. But the possibility of misuse doesn't mean we should ignore the massive potential it offers, especially for independent creators. For example, I created all the images and 3D models for this video in about two evenings. Even all the infographics in this video were created by ChatGPT, just by me explaining what I wanted. The time savings and the abilities this gives one creator is truly amazing. The barrier to entry is lower than it's ever been, and the creative possibilities are exploding. If you're a maker or a designer, or just curious about what's next, now is the time to start learning this stuff. To wrap this up, let me just say, if you made it this far in the video, you're awesome. So are you pro AI and ready to welcome our robot overlords? Or are you stockpiling EMPs and ready to join the resistance? What would you use uh, AI generated models for? Or uh, what do you think I should try next? Uh, let me know in the comments. Start your comment with the word T800, so I know you got this far. If you want to try printing some of these for yourself, head over to my Patreon and I'll put a handful of them up uh, for free and the whole set will be on the maker's fault. And kind of the opposite idea is that if you have a real world object that you want to be able to scan and get into uh, your computer to 3D print, uh, check out this video I have linked here where I show you how to do that. Thanks for watching.